Hey, Twisted Listeners, I'm Cindy. And I'm Diva. And this is Twisted Listers, a podcast about murder and lists. This is part two of Trucker Murders. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be, in my case, I'm really excited about. Um, I re I listened back to the last one, and like, you're right. I It made sense. So <laughs> I was glad yeah. that it made sense. Um, but this it one did. is, this case I'm really excited to talk about. Um, I mean, it's been done a million times, but not really. Well, actually, it has been done by us, but we took the recording down a long time ago. Um, yes. Anyway, anything to talk about before we get into it? Or are we going to have like a real short intro tonight? Yeah, uh, a short intro. I'll try not to yawn too much and you know, <laughs> bum everyone out. But I have a baby, you know, so I yeah. uh, my sleep my sleep is not at 100% capacity. Yeah. Sleep. yeah. You know, it's you so... just don't sleep probably like you should just because of your life. So. I mean, I sleep from like, it depends. Because all the parents that I know and like friends that I have want to start texting me at like 9 o'clock at night um mm, and then i'm like up night. yeah and then my cat's like dancing on my head anywhere between like you know five and six a.m so it really okay. depends it de- my amount of sleep depends i always have so many things that i want to call out when i start when we start the podcast and like or like when i'm thinking about like, oh, oh when we record we're gonna do this and then like it doesn't happen so i always forget and today is no different i'm just recognizing that i can't remember anything i wanted to talk about so cool 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 um, so I guess we should just get into it. Save the people yeah. some time and Let's get into the cases. All right, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yes. Um, so I'm going to Germany or rather like all over Europe um, to talk about a German guy called Volker Eckert. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, I think yeah, I know Volker. this one. Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. know this at all. Um, yeah, I this think I is a gnarly and gross um, serial killer. Uh, Volker, at the time of um, his capture in 2006, was 47 years old. He was born in Plauen in 1959. Um, by all accounts, like several different accounts, they call him like a mediocre, like average dude who was just like not very skilled or exceptional at anything. And so he became, I guess, a housekeeper and then later a truck driver. Um, but what is exceptional question mark, or like, uh, I'd say interesting about this guy is that as a child, um, he says as young as nine, he had very strong sexual feelings about hair. Um, I'm sorry. That's... I'm sorry. That delivery of that sentence was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. he would obsess on his sister's dolls specifically on their hair uh in a in a, a sexual way i'll let you use your imagination um yeah. and he would also have uh strong feelings about wigs um he got a really weird complex going about wanting to touch women's hair but believing that they would not let him touch it i'm going to say correct um you should not just go touching women's hair and they probably would not want you to um as a rule of thumb um so uh, another thing he was really obsessed with was a hairpiece but that belonged to his mother. So like part of, you know, his, he's raiding his mom's wig stash uh, uh-huh. and uh, doing sexual things with them. So that's where we're starting from. Okay. Um, he is clearly troubled as a kid. Uh, and by age 13 in 1973, he also stole his mom's car and went on the run for a few weeks. No, could not find anywhere where he went at age 13. That's wild. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, he was actually given an 18 month prison sentence for this, which is like pretty harsh for a child, but for okay. St- oh, well, it must've been for stealing the car, not for running mm-hmm. away. Okay. Yeah. My boyfriend uh, ran away when he was 13. My boyfriend did for like four days. Yeah. But he hung out mostly um, like a block from his parents' house. So he got caught and didn't go to jail. Anyway, so I guess it's not that weird for a 13 year old. I no. don't know. That's all I was trying to say. Um, no, it's not weird to run away, but the stealing the cars is a lot. Um, That's a little more intense. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And like, where did he go? I have questions. Um, 
So Volker's violence began uh, also at a young age. Uh, when he was only 14 in 1974, um, Volker actually killed his very first victim. So he's at fucking 14. Um, this was his classmate and neighbor, a girl named Sylvia Unterdorfel. Uh, and he targeted her because she had beautiful long hair, uh, which he you know fixated on. So he went to her home. He strangled her manually with his hands and with a curtain cord. Oof. Um, and he then, as he, he would do in all future murders, uh, he lived out his very special fantasy by touching and stroking her hair, uh, for some time. That's all he so, does? Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he's having a sexual, um, hair experience. I'll say that. He, he loves hair. Um. He loves hair. That's very has- strange. Uh, okay. For months, he actually planned this murder out and like w- was thinking about this fantasy. He actually practiced strangling a doll um, and then toying with the doll's hair afterwards, which is like very kind of dorky in a weird way when you think about it. Um, uh, it's like a weird escalation thing, mm, like in a way. Yeah, but you he know? was practicing. Yeah, in his mind. Yeah, that's weird. He he then staged the scene of Sylvia's murder um, to look like a suicide by hanging from a doorknob, and he was unfortunately successful in this staging because his authorities oh, no actually just believe that that's what happened. Yeah, um, and her parents live for like a long time. Her family and friends thinking that's what she did, um, and uh. he would later say, "Yeah, it's fucked up." Um, and he would later say that he would think about this murder and become um, sexually excited by it. So he kind of relived the memory of this one for a long time. I mean, um, that's not that's not like weird, really. No, no. Um, he just kept going uh, with violence against women because he got away with this one, right? So that was like kind of encouraging, I think. Um, he was arrested for strangling a young woman uh, when he was 18 in 1978. He got a prison sentence of less than a year uh, for doing that, uh, I guess assault or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And he would go on uh, over the eight years that would follow to um, strangle at least 30 women. And I had to actually understand this to be separate from the murders I'm about to talk about. Like he would also just strangle. Like not women. to death. I think, yeah. Like just huh. assaulting them. Okay. So I think that's also a thing he does in, uh, frequently. Okay. Um, okay. So in 1988, um, he strangled uh, a woman uh, in an assault that I have down named as Claudia. I'm going to get her last name. After surviving this assault, she gave a detailed description to authorities um, and they scooped him up. Uh, and he actually got 12 years uh, in prison for this assault, like attempted murder, essentially. Oh. Um, when he got out in 1994, he actually went to one of his other victims' homes and posed as a plumbing repair person uh, and tried to get into her house, <laughs> and she didn't fall for it. Wait, like, hi, plumber, I recognize you because you yeah. fucking strangled me? You idiot? Yes. yes. God, Correct. what a fucking moron. Yeah, so after he's been on his strangle-a-thon, um, he goes to prison, like I said. He gets out in 1994. Boop, 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 boop. Fast forward to 2001. Um, he's going to start uh, essentially a really intense murder spree. I'm just going to jump right into it. And it should come as no surprise, given literally everything I've said, that this guy is going to do some weird murders. Um, it's, yeah. The strangling, the hair, love, and, you know, it's not good. Um, mm-hmm. So he picks up 20, and he's a truck driver going all over Europe. Um, keep that in mind. Um, so he picks up in, uh, I believe in Spain, I'm in Spain. Yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry. Southwest France, a lot of France, Spain. So in mm-hmm. Southwest France, he picks up 21 year old Sandra Osifo. She was a sex worker who was originally from Nigeria. Uh, and like many trucker serial killers and serial killers in general, of course, he's preying on sex workers and women who are vulnerable. Right. Um, he picked out Sandra because she had a long, uh, wig, uh, that he was into, um he killed her uh, strangled her to death within an hour touched the hair dumped her in a ditch touch the hair touch the wig yeah yeah okay touch the wig hair. touch the wig hair uh and there was no investigation to speak of for sandra's death so a lot of times it's noted um in these cases that the cops just didn't give a shit because these are both sex workers and immigrants right so who cares yeah also france is racist as fuck 
No oh god, yeah. I mean, like Whoa. super extra. Whoa. Like you think yeah. it's bad here. Woof. No, I mean like even amongst the European countries, they all have issues with this, but I would say France is high up on the my list of racist countries. Uh yeah. Um yeah. High, high, high. Like they're almost like proud of it. I wouldn't say proud, but like I don't think they could be more matter of fact about it. Like if yeah. they try it. Like they are so fucking no. matter of fact about it. Yeah, they have a lot of immigrant uh, communities and they don't uh, like them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So two months after that in Spain, uh, Volker picked up Isabel Beatriz Diaz. Uh, he strangled and sexually assaulted her uh, very brutally in the cab of his truck. Um, she fought him violently, but ultimately lost uh, the fight. And after killing her, he threw her onto a freeway. Uh, lots of times he's just like... Whoosh, just throws him out of the truck, like, very cavalier. Like, onto the actual, um, like, active roadway, or just, like, the side of the freeway? The side of the freeway, not, oh, okay. like, in front of a car. Yeah. Um, that would be wild. It would uh, be. I was she, like, damn, that's bold. Like, no. Uh, her body was found two months later. Um, uh, in 2002, uh, a sex worker named Benedicta Edwards, uh, who was 23, originally from Sierra Leone, um, I believe also in France, her nude body was found along a footpath, um, and this is believed to be one of his victims around this time in 2002 another Czech a victim originally from the Czech Republic I don't know why we have her nationality but not her name mm -hmm. oh maybe because it was in the Czech Republic that would make sense Diva uh, oh, so a victim it. let's say she was in the Czech Republic okay. um, but she a victim was never identified but had the same MO of strangulation and was thought um, to be his victim. And both her and Benedicta were thought to be the victims of Volker because of timestamps of his ATM uh, card that put him right next to where the bodies were found. Okay. So I'll get into it a little bit later. MO, they, so I was saying, with yeah. this MO, it's really hard to tell because you can't really tell if somebody pet somebody's hair. Yeah, but it's uh, the reason they they find him. I think is strangulation and the t the timestamps, okay, the paper trail, okay, which you'll talk about. Okay. Yeah, uh, in two thousand six, uh, a Polish citizen named Agnieszka Boss is picked up in France and killed in a similar way. Uh, it's copy and paste, like the exact same mo. Um, also that year, twenty year old Miglena Petrova Rahim, a Bulgarian national who was a, who was working as a sex worker, was found near a soccer stadium. Um, uh, I believe also in Spain, he was actually questioned in this investigation um, initially because a CCTV camera recorded his truck in the area where the body was found, but they let him go. And I'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that at the end. They had like. 4,000 chances to catch this guy earlier, than, and the cops were like, mm -hmm. it's fine, nondescript white man. Go up, go about your business. Um, this feels similar to my case, as you know, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and Raheem's husband actually later would come out and say that he took issue with how she was portrayed in the media, and he actually said that she was not a sex worker, which is interesting. And of course, it's like, you know, we care about all the victims, but it's interesting that if she wasn't, that means the police are kind of um, using that as a way to dis dismiss her case, right? Right, like they extra just don't want to do work, which and is like, ah, not, she's probably then, a sex worker too. Yeah, which like shouldn't be an acceptable way to kind of like push off the work, you know? Like nobody should be like, yeah. oh, that's fine then. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's just ridiculous when they're not, and they're like, well, we're just gonna say so, so we don't have to like fucking deal with this, you know? Yeah. Um. So he was um. So Volker was brought to justice in a really random way. That's a smattering of some of his murders. Okay. Um, he was found in a random way, um, which is wild. He actually had his truck parked outside of a football stadium in Spain and was just chilling, waiting for it to get dark so he could get rid of his latest victim, their body. Mm -hmm. And totally by chance, a CCTV camera tech was installing uh, a new camera at a factory adjacent to where he was parked. And as he was uh, adjusting and installing the camera, he just happened to swipe past that parking lot, like, shoop, uh, and caught Volker in his truck. It's like the one where the guy was taking the overhead videos and caught the guy with the yes. bodies. Yeah. Exactly. Weird. Um, then when the police, um, why did I just see that? Was that, were you talking about that? And that's mm -hmm. when I saw that. Yeah, that was the, what, what was that, that? one? It was the one where he killed the grandparents and the five-year-old. Mm -hmm. There was what something else where I saw that, though. 
really like a, a true crime a true crime thing that i was watching though there was another like accidental filming like aerial of bodies i wonder yeah I'm gonna. Uh, that's gonna bother bother me now. I'll tell. I'll text you. When I think of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please um, do. <laughs> so the police actually found later, uh, like the next day, uh, they found the woman's this woman's body, and then they gathered all that CCTV from the area. And boop, 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 there's fucking Volker, right? The only truck in the area, right at the right time. And they trace uh, his truck to Germany, where he sort of launches from. Uh, and cop, he was in Cologne, uh, and they track you know catch up with him they radio to the other cops in cologne and the cops get him uh they bring him in for questioning he's ultimately arrested and volker's like what body in the parking lot i have no idea like plays totally dumb um but this is an interesting move he says like i have to go to my truck and i actually have a headache so i need to get something out of the back of my truck and they're like they let him yeah, but they're like, that's a really weird move to be like, you know, I need to go to my truck all of a sudden for some reason, you know? Right. Um, so they ultimately are able to search the back of his truck because they like, it's kind of a, a subliminal like thing. A shady like, little I, moment, yeah. Yeah. So they go to the cab of his truck and they find some shit. Um, mm-hmm. They find a trove of Polaroids of his victims. They find a bunch of ladies' purses. Uh, That's they fucking find weird. Clipping- mm-hmm. They find clippings of women uh, from magazines and newspapers. And I'm going to go ahead and assume these are ladies with long, luscious uh, hair. Mm-hmm. Um, they find hair clippings from five different women. Uh, and Cindy, you ask where and how did he keep this hair? And you're about to be, your brain is not going to like the information I'm going to tell you. Oh, no. Um, he glued these hair clippings from his victims to a rubber doll. And that to me implies a sex doll. Um, but like all of them together, like various, yes, like a smorgasbord of hair. And the doll was under his bed. Oh God! Oh my God! So he's cutting their hair off and gluing it to a sex doll. Um, it's one of the grosser things I've that I've heard. Uh, That's so recent, gnarly. Recent memory. Um, and it is. It's, it's just so weird. Um, it's so gross. Yeah, the first one I had the teeth drilling, and to me, the hair uh, sex doll is like the. Oh, kind of you warned me. You're like the next one's worse. Stone. Was, the next one's gross. Well, they're they're both gross. gross. They're just both yeah. gross. Um, so as if all this evidence wasn't enough, they also find extensive letters in which Volker wrote in detail about the murders. So he like described it because he's someone who definitely got off on it later. Like he wanted to relive yeah. them as well. Yeah. Um, he, when he's arrested, Volker confessed right away to killing six women. He was like, "Oh, just straight up." He's like, "Hey, I did this." Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, but weirdly, there he killed more than six. But he's like, oh. look, I'll give you six. Um, so European police basically, uh, or German police, reconstructed his kind of travels. Uh, and they found all this, these clues and uh, this extensive paper trail across Spain, Germany, Italy, France, and the Czech Republic. Um, and they basically determined that he was probably guilty of it over 50 murders and attempted murders um Mm -hmm. stretching all the way back to like when he was a very very young dude um so he had a very prolific murder spree for for whatever reason maybe it's what they have the evidence on he's like Mm -hmm. i'll give you these six um Uh yeah uh and i'll even though he first confessed he later became unhappy with how he was being represented in the media which like rolling my eyes Mm -hmm. um I mean, and there's no way to put a good spin on that. No, like, there's just no. not. No. Yeah, so he stopped talking to investigators because he was being a little petty bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but again, they are tracing his steps and putting all these murders together um, and finding this, you know, as a series uh, of things. And as they look back into Volker's past, they also... Um, find credit card transactions, his truck hitting different toll booths, his employment records of where his truck went. Um, Cause when you're a trucker, like your steps are traced like of where you went right. for work. Right. Right. Um, so they, they are able to confirm out of their S their, 
murders that they're guessing he was involved with, they're able to confirm a seven more for sure. So that's like 13. And they add on on top of that 40 assaults. Oh, shit. Right, right, right. Because of the... Yeah. All the stranglings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a prolific fucking dude. He's like murdering wow. and strangling and hair touching all across Europe. Um, nonstop. Um, and they also find... And I didn't even list through this because there's a long, long, long essay about it if you want to read more. But basically the cops um, across multiple different countries had like ample fucking chances to stop him. He was arrested at least three separate times and let go. He was brought in for questioning in multiple, um, many of these murders and let go. <laughs> it's okay. basically that story again and again and again and again. Like, well, we almost had it and then we let him go. We brought right. him in then we let him go. Um, right. Embarrassing. It's really embarrassing and frustrating. It just shows you that cops are shit it's Literally tale everywhere. as old as time though like all there's so many stories just they're, like that they're shitty everywhere yeah and also i think it does matter that he's a nondescript white guy you know? yeah um, yeah totally just, just so under the radar yeah um while the cases are being put together against him volker unfortunately um died of suicide uh, uh in july 2007 yeah uh, he was apparently mostly upset that his sister wouldn't visit him. Mm -hmm. That was like the motive, supposedly, for why he was feeling down. Um, not like necessarily the whole going to jail forever because of murders thing. He was upset that his sister was like, you know, bothered because yeah, fucking, fucking, of course she was, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, he, yeah. So it's unfortunate. I would agree with everyone's take on this. It's really unfortunate that um he killed himself because it's kind of closes off any hope that we're going to know more about the scope of the murders that he committed across Europe. Um, there was also clothing found um, in uh, the sort of like gross murder shrine hoard he had in his truck, clothing and purses and items that were never connected to anyone in particular. So that's also mm -hmm. kind of a sign, kind of like the toy box killer, right? How he had like all these earrings and shit. You're like, Oh my God, you know, you know, that belonged to someone. Right. Um, right. So we know for sure there's more victims uh, that weren't connected officially and authorities they've actually uh germany has have actually tr has actually tried to continue an investigation to kind of like they have with the toy box killer to continue to try to link unidentified or un um unsolved cases to him but authorities apparently in england belgium and the netherlands have not cooperated with this investigation so germany's kind of like trying to get other countries involved and they're like eh, we don't care they're sex workers right workers Nobody so gives a shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's so that's up. Volker, Volker Eckert, Mister Mister Hairman, Mister Hairman. I like that. I like that. Um, that's my my uh, my name for him. We're giving him a nickname, which is good because our next case, the one I'm doing, he already has a nickname. Um, mm. and I like that this guy didn't really have one, and we gave him one, and it's Mister Hairman. It's a very that yeah. sounds like a um Adult Swim cartoon, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Hairman. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm just going to jump in to mine and get this done. I apologize if you guys hear me sniffling. I keep, um, muting myself when I have, like, the big snuffle, but when I'm talking, it's harder to do it. See? That was so gross. Mm. So sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, anyway. Uh, I'm going to talk about Keith Hunter Jesperson. Jesperson. Uh, Jesperson. He's also otherwise known as the happy face killer not to be confused with the smiley face killer i was just um, about to like to so you're gonna anything. do it yeah i know not to be confused so, with the smiley face killers killer killers murders potentially doesn't exist we don't know what do you think do you think this might you do it does yeah. yeah at least for some of some of them yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, it's weird to think that like that many frat boys like die by like similar means. Plus, I I'm just in general yeah. like to take the stance of believing in every like weird, um, you know, conspiracy theory, occult, yeah. type thing. And there, there's something vaguely spooky about the. Uh, oh, there super is you know, smiley yeah. face. Yeah. So if you guys want to hear that story about the smiley face murders, um, you're not going to right now. <laughs> you're going to hear did about you, the happy did you, face. Like, I did cover it. Did. Yeah. It was covered, you so you guys can find it on the on the podcast. Um, uh, probably happy face, or I mean, uh, smiley face killer would be how you'd find it. But today I'm going to talk about the yeah. happy face killer. And Diva actually covered this way back when. 
Um, it's down. It's not, we don't have it online anymore on the airwaves. Um, when we covered uh, good dads, uh, murderers who were good dads. But we're going to redo it, and I'm going to do it now. And um, let's just get into it. So uh, you think I'm going to start with Keith Jesperson's story, but I'm not. It's mm-hmm. This story starts in a real weird way. So on okay. January 21st, 1990, 23-year-old Tanya Bennett went out on the town in Portland, Oregon. She was a young, mm-hmm. pretty, social woman. She loved going out drinking and having fun. And she was just always down to have a good time, which is totally normal for someone her age. 23-year-old, you should be hitting the bars. You've only been able to do it for two years. You're probably not sick of it yet. So she goes out the night of January 21st. The following morning, none of her friends or family have heard from her, and somebody ends up reporting her missing. Just a few hours after that, her body is found near the Columbia River Gorge, just east of Portland. She'd been beaten, sexually assaulted, and strangled to death. Authorities uh, put this out to the media and asked for the public to, you know, call in with any information they had. And in doing so, they released a good amount of information about what happened, including that she was found with a ligature still around her neck, um, among other things that we'll discuss. Uh, Police. uh, Sorry, no, I already said that. (laughs) In uh, so February 5th, there we go. February 5th. So she disappeared uh, the night of January 21st, was found January 22nd. February 5th, someone anonymously called the police to say that 39-year-old John Sosnowski was bragging about killing this young woman at a local bar. Uh, This is an anonymous caller. They don't leave a name, but they say, yeah, I saw this man uh, bragging about how he killed Tanya. Police could not find a record of this person, Mr. Sosnovsky, because they misspelled his name when they took it down. So they were just like, LOL, OL, and they just didn't look into it. Then, about a week or so later, the same anonymous caller, we later find out it's the same person, calls a different station. And this time, those officers wrote the name down correctly. So this man, John Sosnovsky, was a shitty dude. He had a few DUIs, a few, and a few other petty but violent offenses against him. And he and his girlfriend had a long history of fighting to the point where the police were involved. His girlfriend at the time was 58-year-old Laverne Pavlinak. And she had in the past accused John of crimes he had not committed as a way of, like, getting back at him when she's pissed off. So they'd get into a fight and she'd call the cops and be like, he raped somebody. You know what I mean? Like, just like weird shit. That's wild. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So it was either, you know, because she was mad at him or maybe she figured if he went to jail, she could finally get away from him. I don't know. But in any case, while they're kind of talking to his, you know, parole officer and whatever, police realized that it was Laverne who made these anonymous calls. So they go ahead and they interview both Laverne and John. And they even sent Laverne home with a wire because she was like, yes, I'm the one who called. Yes, my boyfriend did this. So they're like, all right, let's get him, you know, on tape confessing. But he doesn't confess. No, nothing on the on the tape. Laverne continues um, to push and push and say, no, 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 he did this. He did this. I know we're not getting proof, but he did it. And she says that on the night of January 21st, she got a call from John who told her that he was, quote, in trouble and said, I need you to meet me at a truck stop, which is interesting. So a truck stop is involved. Upon her arrival, yeah. she says that he was hiding between two trailers, like two, you know, truck trailers, and that uh, he had the body of Tanya Bennett wrapped in a blanket. Now, she at first thought that Tanya was just sick, but then John told her, no, she's dead. She said that the two wrapped her in a shower curtain and disposed of her body along the old Columbia River Highway, about 20 miles east in the Columbia River Gorge. This was all, you know, commonly known, by the way. She also said that before disposing of Tanya's body, that John cut a piece of fabric from her jeans to keep as a souvenir. Now, the jean thing was important because her jeans had been cut, Tanya's had. Uh, but uh, Laverne here produced that piece of jean material that she said John cut. It did not match. It didn't match Tanya's clothes. It wasn't the right okay. cut. You know, 
Uh, so police are kind of like, well, you didn't really get that right. She's like insisting, no, he did it. I helped dump the body. So they took her out to the Columbia River Gorge and they actually like blindfolded her while they drove in. So she couldn't tell how far in they'd gone. And then they kind of like, once they had been going for a while, they like let her open her eyes or whatever. And they were like, take us to where, take us to where the body was. And now I don't know if any of you have been to Oregon, but like, it's just trees everywhere. It all looks the fucking same. Yeah. It's like real hard to know one marker from another. That should be the tagline for Oregon. It's just trees everywhere. It's, it's just like, trees everywhere. Just, it, just trees. <laughs> the first time that Rory and I drove through Oregon, he was like, he's like, there's so many trees. Like, is it just, is it just like this everywhere? And I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's just when you're like from that. LA, it's, it's, yeah, it's very weird. It's fucking crazy. Like, you can't see it's through so them. You're much nature. surrounded. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. But anyway, so they take her out there and she picked the right spot. She picked right where the body had been dumped. So even though the wow. genes weren't right, even though other, you know, things that she had said were wrong, even though she didn't have John on, you know, any sort of recording admitting anything, her finding the right spot where the body was dumped was enough. And the police arrested John for murder. Now, this is despite eyewitnesses putting him at a bar that was 25 miles from where Tanya went missing. And like I said, most of all of the other evidence or whatever she provided being wrong. So they arrest John, but they also arrested Laverne and they were both arrested for murder. Now, before and during her trial, Laverne recants her statement, says she's just trying to get away from John because he was abusive. Um, you know, and she's like, I don't know anything about this murder. I got lucky where I picked the body. Now, also during this time, a little piece of graffiti was found at a rest stop, like a truck stop bathroom in Livingston, Montana. And this graffiti that was written on the wall said, quote, I killed Tanya Bennett January 21st, 1990 in Portland, Oregon. I beat her to death, raped her, and I loved it. Yes, I'm sick, mm -hmm. but I enjoy myself, too. People took the blame, and I'm free. No. So, yeah. So he, this is written on the wall, but police don't take, they don't take this seriously. They take literally the one thing that Tanya got, or that Laverne got right seriously, but they don't take this seriously. A similar okay. confession was found in a bathroom in Oregon, but again, they ignored it. So... Both Laverne and John are found guilty. Well, Laverne is found guilty and given a fucking life sentence. And John, realizing that he could be up for the death penalty at this point, he pleads no contest. And they're both given life. He's given life with parole, the possibility of parole after 15 years. Now, let's talk about Keith Jesperson. Okay. Keith was born in Canada. He had a really shitty childhood. He was one of five. He had older brothers who called him Igor because he was so big. He was six, mm -hmm. seven, full grown. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, but he was a big boy his whole life. His father was an alcoholic and a terrible man. Uh, when they were young, when he was young, they moved to Washington where he finished high school and then was discouraged from going to college by his father who said he just couldn't do it. So apparently he thought Keith was an idiot. I don't know. I'm going to mention this very briefly. He hurt animals. It was intensely, unusually bad, even for serial killers. Uh, we will leave it at that. But I do want to call out, because I think it's really important to note that yeah. he was doing this from the time he was like seven years old. And I think I've heard about that stuff on shows. So I'm I sorry. think you have sorry. to. Come, yeah, yeah, come to yeah. My, my, through my brain, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about it. You guys can look it up. I wouldn't recommend it. Like, honestly, you don't need to know, know the details. Um, yeah, just know it anyway. was bad. It was fucking fucked up. Um, so anyway, he married young. He never had girlfriends in high school. Like, girls didn't like him. Uh, but he ended up marrying, like, in his early, early 20s. And his uh, wife, what was her name? Rose Huck. Rose Huck. They married in 1975. So he was, like, barely 20. And they had three kids together. So, you know, normal-ish life, yeah. I guess. Seemingly. <laughs> Yeah, seemingly. Um, Cue the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you know, 
having not gone to college, he didn't have a ton of job opportunities. So he uh, became a long haul trucker. So yeah. uh, I also wanted to call out, sorry, I totally forgot that he tried to kill a young, like a 10 year old or when he was 10, he tried to kill a friend. I forgot to mention that. Okay. And then another kid, he attempted to drown in the local pool. When he got in arguments with his friends. I forgot. I told you this is like the first bit of information I wrote down. So when he was young, he was already having like murder, murderous tendencies. Um, I think due to his age and due to the fact that he didn't succeed, people didn't super take it seriously. But I did want to okay. want to call that out. He, so anyway, he dabbled. He, he, dabbled. Yeah. he hurt animals. He attempted to kill other children as a child and just was not successful. Um, both times he was stopped. So I don't know if he would have actually completed the actions against the other children had someone not intervened, but it seems like maybe. Um, so anyway, he had three kids. He became a long haul trucker to support the family. And um, he was gone a lot. Now, women would call his wife looking for him by name. And when his wife asked who they were, they would say that they were his girlfriends. So he was definitely out like, living a life uh yeah. rose dealt with his bullshit for 15 years before she finally Ooh. fucking divorced him yeah and it's a she lot of bullshit it's a lot of fucking bullshit and she divorced him uh in 1990 now if you remember okay. i said that tanya was murdered in 1990 um so i'm not saying that those two things were necessarily linked but uh, I'm also not necessarily saying that Laverne and John didn't kill Tanya, but I'm absolutely saying that they didn't kill Tanya. Uh, mm. so, so anyway, <laughs> so um, Laverne and John are doing their time in prison. And meanwhile, other women are dying. In 1992, uh, a woman who was later identified incorrectly or incompletely by the name Claudia, was found August uh, 30th, 1992 in Blythe, California. Um, she, it's in Riverside County, by the way, so like down here. She was raped and strangled and um, dumped. And there wasn't a lot of, uh, nobody really cared, is what I'm trying to say. Not a lot of interest in her case because okay. they couldn't even tell what she wa who she was, but I think they thought she was maybe, you know, um, a sex in the sex trade or hitchhiking homeless who knows a month later in turlock california the body of cynthia lynn rose was discovered um she was a sex worker so once again not a big deal nobody cared another sex worker Lori ann pentland of salem oregon went missing in november 1992 and in june 1993 oh woman who was a Jane Doe for a very long time uh, was found in Santanella, California. Also uh, right. home, of, home of the pea soup. Yes, Anderson's split pea soup. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she was identified uh, I think I don't remember, but I do know that her death was considered a drug overdose at the time she was found. Then, randomly, so most of these are West Coast, like California, Oregon, you know. But randomly, in 1994, a woman was found in Crestview, Florida. Uh, and she wasn't identified until 2023. So, during this time, these bodies are coming up missing, raped, strangled, similar MOs. Nobody's connecting them. Like I said, one of them was found to be a drug overdose, which, like, how would you mistake that? I don't really understand. Um, yeah. But then on June, oh, I'm sorry, March 30th, 1995. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't, that's not when this person died. Anyway, in early 1995, I think in February, the body of Julie Winningham was found. And mm -hmm. police started looking into her death. And they call, you know, contacted her family. They were able to, I think her ID was like on her. It was pretty easy for them to identify her. So they reach out to her family and they say, oh, you know, we don't know what happened. Um, but she had a boyfriend named Chris and he was a trucker. 
And they look on the car registration because they're like, I think we think that he helped her buy her car. So they look on the car registration and they find not Chris, but a man named Keith Jesperson. So they find Keith Mm -hmm. on this car registration that he's sharing with Julie Winningham. Now they go, they go and they question Keith and he's like, I had nothing to do with it. I don't know what you're talking about. They suspect that it was him. I don't know exactly what tipped them off. So Keith is released because they don't have any proof. And he attempts to kill himself twice. Okay. Uh, it doesn't work. I don't even really know what he did. But I do know that he did some like maybe like half ass. You know, like he's just not sure what to do. And so he's trying to get out of it. Finally, um, a couple of I think he like takes off and then he comes back and he turns himself in. And he just straight up admits to it. And he says, yeah. I kill I killed Julie. Um, and basically he said they got in a fight and he decided to kill her. Now, while he's uh while he is under arrest, he starts talking about a bunch of other murders. And in fact, a few days before his arrest, knowing he was going to be arrested for her murder, he wrote a letter to one of his brothers, uh, and he confessed to having killed eight people. So uh, I don't know how many he actually killed, but but I do know that you know the ones that I listed are who are officially attributed to him. Now he just starts talking and he gives up all of his information. And the interesting thing about Keith, that's actually super pedestrian and normal for serial killers, is that every single woman that he killed, he had a reason. He had something that they mm-hmm. did where they deserved it, right? Classic, yeah. Right. So one woman that he killed, uh, he said she was hitchhiking across um, the country because she wanted to go be with her boyfriend because her boyfriend wanted to marry her and she needed to get to him. And he said that they were together for a while, like maybe as much as like a week or two. But every time he would stop at a rest stop instead of like somewhere where there was gas and food, she would complain because she couldn't get food. She couldn't get, you know, water. Um, If he would stop to sleep for too long, she'd start bugging him, trying to wake him up. So eventually he got so annoyed that he just had to rape and strangle her. Now, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like kick her out of the truck or something. Right. He had to rape her and then kill Mm -hmm. her. Yeah, uh, one so of the stupid. it's really fucking stupid. One of them he killed because he said that she snuck into his truck while he was sleeping. Another one he said that she wanted to double the fee that she was going to charge him for the sex that they had had, and she threatened to call the cops if he didn't pay her. Which, like, no, she didn't. Like, no, no woman no. in the sex trade is going to threaten to call no. the cops on you for not paying them. Like, that's absolutely not a fucking because they will be arrested. So right. Right. It's no. so stupid. Um, so he yeah. strangled her. He said that was consensual sex. And then he strangled her. And then he straight up admits to Tanya Bennett. Mm. Now, what's really interesting in the way that he got his nickname is that on top of walking into the police station and admitting what he did during these years that Laverne and uh, what's his face? were in prison john were in prison uh keith here who didn't want to get caught but also wanted all the credit was writing letters to various newspapers and police stations claiming that he had killed tanya admitting to these other murders and every time he would write one he would sign it with a smiley face at the bottom of the letter So over the years, while these murders are happening and while these two people are sitting in prison, Keith is sending anonymous letters, taking credit for these crimes. And they're not being, the letters aren't being traced. They're not hardly being taken seriously at all. So when he's finally arrested, they link those letters back to him. They realize, yes, he did fucking do all of this. And, um, no, there's egg on the cop's face, right? Definitely not something Mm -hmm. we've heard a hundred times before. Yeah. So back to Laverne and uh, John here. (laughs) So fucking crazy. Even after both the defense attorneys for the two of them and the prosecutors went to the judge and said, hey, our bad. These guys had nothing to do with it. 
Keith Jesperson did it, the judge was like, well, the jury decided they were guilty and it's disrespectful to the jury to change to change the verdict. So they're going to stay in prison. What? Mm -hmm. And now to be sure. Disrespectful? Who cares? It's insane that a judge has the power to even say that. Oh, my God. Especially because the detectives not really trusting Keith Jesperson to admit to it or like to be telling the truth. They drove him out to the same gorge and had him locate where the body was dumped. But he didn't do it. He couldn't (laughs) properly find. It'd been five years. And also, like, he probably doesn't care where he dumped the bodies. I mean, some murderers go back to visit the bodies, but he didn't. So it's. Again, Oregon all looks the same. It's been five years. It's not surprising that Mm -hmm. he can't find her body. But what he did do is he said, listen, I might not know where her body is, but I can tell you that I dumped her purse. And I dumped her purse at this location. Now, her purse had never been found. And it took the cops, like, I don't know, upwards of a couple of weeks to months to find it. But eventually, they found the purse where he said it would be. And that was their proof. They also tested DNA and found that it was him because she'd been raped. So they had all this fucking proof. They had the confession. They had the purse. They had DNA. Finally, the judge comes back and he says, okay, I'm going to release John and Laverne. And for John, I'm going to vacate his sentence. But Laverne, you're such a dumb bitch to fucking waste everybody's time and set up your fucking boyfriend Frame him for murder because you're mad at him. Yeah. I'm not vacating your sentence. I'm going to release you from prison, but that's staying on your fucking record. Oh, as it just a fuck you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Laverne died, I believe, in 2003. And uh, she died with that on her record. So that never, ever came off. Now, as for Keith, Keith here, the hero that he is, when he found out that Laverne and John had been released. He cried tears of joy because he was able to help these innocent people go free. What a wonderful man, right? He was so yeah. happy that he um, helped them. He righted you. a wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> now, as for any other bodies or any other murders that he committed, We don't know for sure. We only know the ones that I listed, including a woman who to this day is not, has not been identified. Um, There's only one Jane Doe. One of three were Jane Doe's until 2023. So we had Patricia Skipley, who was identified in 2022. And then Suzanne Kellenberg, Kellenberg on October 3rd, 2023. So like not even six months ago. But we do still have one Jane Doe, the one that was found in Blythe, California. Um, we have no idea who who she is to this day. Oh, and insane. Keith, yeah. Well, the weird thing is Keith was always forthcoming with their names, but because he was dealing with women in the sex industry, he didn't exactly have a last name and he didn't always have their real right. name. So even though he was willing to kind of give up the information, it didn't typically help. So Keith here got three life sentences with no possibility for parole and uh he's still in prison to this day he's just chilling uh what i find really interesting is his grown daughter recently melissa went Mm -hmm. viral on tiktok talking about her father and one of the things uh i actually watched one of her tiktoks today so she does true crime podcasts she does interviews I was like, about she's been her doing father this stuff before forever. TikTok. she's all no, over the place yeah. books tv yeah she's like really really into it and just like talking about how to like survive now i do want to call out that she and her two other siblings will say a couple things about him that make him the happy face killer like a little bit drive it home more because it wasn't just that he signed those with happy faces because you're like why would he do that? Is he taunting? Whatever. Yeah. She said, and her siblings agreed, that he was a really good dad. Now, they did concede that he did kill animals in front of them, which was, like, real fucking weird. That's but, not the best dad behavior. No. Yeah. Definitely not. But the flip side of that was, like, he would be gone on his trucking routes, routes, and then he would come back and bring them presents, take everybody out to dinner, basically just play the hero like dad's home he's the best and then he would just take off again for like weeks and months but every time he was home he was this like jovial happy dude everybody who knew him said he was like really happy really charismatic really like always laughing so the happy face killer really fits him on a bunch of levels 
Um, but anyway, so she has a TikTok now. And one of her more recent TikToks, or it's a pinned one, she has a letter from her dad that he sent her and kind of paraphrases what he said to her. Basically, he found a picture of her from her wedding day. He sent it to her. He printed it out and sent it to her. Said, you look fat. Your husband looks fat. Maybe this marriage will stick because it's not her first marriage. And then he ended the letter asking why he wasn't invited. So, (laughs) yeah. So he's just a fucking dick through and through. Um, Yeah. But he's still alive. He's going to be 69 in April. Okay. And uh, let's let's hope he doesn't live that much longer because he's a real piece of shit. Wow, mm-hmm. it's weird that like Melissa Moore, Melissa Moore, right? That like, she still talks to him. I feel like it's mostly a one way conversation at this point. The way that she kind of yeah. talks about him is like fuck him, you know. I yeah. don't know that it was always that way. It was probably really difficult, and a lot of her books and like interviews are about how difficult it was, like coming to terms with who her father was. Um, but so yeah. I don't really, I don't really know where they're at at this point. But yeah, she's yeah. become kind of the poster child for children of serial killers, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, which is yeah. crazy. Um, because they're victims too, and people don't really think about that, you know. Um, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's Mr. Jesperson. Did I miss anything? Anything you want to mention? No. Um. Oh, that's I pretty have- good. Pretty good take on. It. I have one more thing, and I remembered when I read about it that you mentioned it. The way that Keith said that he would check to make sure his victims were dead was by sticking his fist down their throat. I literally was about to, like, debating in my head of, like, should I say the thing that most traumatizes me about yes. this case or should i just yes. let cindy not mention it because no, it's probably no, no, for no. everyone's benefit that you don't mm-hmm. so i was gonna like err on the side of yep. of censorship and be like let's just not go there i remembered but... it i remembered it i didn't forget in one instance whole, he stepped on the woman yes on, in one instance instead of the whole fist method he stepped on her neck with his boot but either way mm. so this man is a true fucking monster and also oh. that's gross so there you go yeah that's it's it it's truckers there they yes. are there they are yeah mm-hmm. wow uh what are we doing next week was it's your it's pick. my choice did i pick I yeah remember. i kind of started a little bit of a list oh um, yes yeah Is it a good list are there good are there good top are there good it, stories it, well, I've kind of got it. I've got it. I mean, we're kind of doing live negotiation here, but there's sort of we two. Are. There's two tracks. There's two tracks in it that we can combine okay. or we can separate. There's there's shocking confessions where the killer made an exceptionally shocking or con- confession out of the blue, like say on their deathbed, or say like Ooh. no one saw that confession coming. Mm-hmm. But then I also have included um, a smattering of times where a witness came forward and solved a case out of the blue. So it's kind of like let's shocking combine. testimonies shocking confessions that is the name of our shocking confessions shocking confessions and it can be the confession of the killer the confession of a witness it's just gotta be shocking that's all we want i want a shock factor all right there it is so that's our next um yeah that's our next topic and it was kind of inspired in part by this case where they confessed but didn't actually fucking do it and then he just confessed all the blue so there was definitely Mm. some confessing uh that inspired me to think of that so so there we go. That's it. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Please like, rate, review, share with your friends and family. Thanks to our new patrons that we got. We got two in the last week. We love you. Thank nice. you. Nice. Awesome. And uh, if you guys want to join, feel free. You can and find all thinking, the links. I was thinking we should do some kind of fun. Uh, maybe if we can find the time, of course, we should mm. do some kind of fun and <laughs> fun lists like um, ranking serial killer arts or like oh. more serial killer girlfriends. You know, Ooh, like poetry. Marriages. Serial killer um, poetry. Yeah, just sort of fun stuff that's sort of like, you know, lighthearted. Yeah, making fun of these idiots. I'm into it. Let's yeah. do that. That'll yeah. be a Patreon yeah. we do together. Um, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with more. Hopefully doing more Patreon soon. We just posted one. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess that's it. So until next week. Stay. Off our. Liz. 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 Liz.